There was a time when the limestone LNC tower downtown was the tallest structure between New York and Miami. Now it stands in the shadow of glass. What's behind the evolution and will it look the same in a century? Tonight we kick off our partnership with the new Nashville banner with a look at those questions. Demetria Caladimos talked with the historian and engineer and Tony Girantana, the man who has his eye on building the tallest skyscraper yet to examine the glassification of Nashville. The newest additions to the Nashville skyline, what you might call the shiny object, are shiny objects. Nearly a dozen glimmering glass towers have risen from the ground in what seems like a blink. It's glaring. <laughs> this is our first day here, and that's my impression of what Nashville would be. The brick and the old buildings and everything. So you yeah. can see parts of it, but there's a lot of flash. Yeah. The population comes, you know, change. And there's a lot of good changes from what I've been seeing. It seems like they keep springing up. And yeah, they all do kind of blend together. There's nothing much unique about them like the old brick buildings that really stand out, right? I'm looking forward to seeing what the next one's gonna be. The sun shining in them, I think it's so pretty. <laughs> Most of these buildings, I don't think, are going to have a long life. Maybe they'll last 100 years if they're lucky. Jim Hubler knows every structure in downtown Nashville inside and out. Across the street from us is an Art Deco building that was a hotel. Block up, there's a, a nice Romanesque revival building that was one of the first department stores in Nashville. As a historian and curator, he helps stabilize and preserve our state capital built with stone, but the wrong kind. When you look around here, this isn't Nashville limestone. Nashville limestone is awful. So when William Strickland, to save money, built the capital out of our local limestone, after 100 years, it was falling apart. So Governor Clement had all of the columns taken off of the capital, all of the pediments, all of the pilasters. When the sun is going down or early in the morning, look at it in a raking light and you can see the difference in the stone. History has shown us material matters. Yeah, glass boxes, they aren't made out of lasting material. No character, no soul, blah. <laughs> well, not so fast. We wanted people to look at this building and say, now that is cool. This is probably the most distinctive of the shiny structures. You can think of it as a giant Jenga puzzle, but it's not going anywhere. In fact, the same developer is building three glazed structures right in the same area downtown. What we're selling is the views. I mean, that's we're here on the roof looking around. This is what folks want. It's the view, stupid. But in more ways than one, it comes with a price. Windows are necessary, windows are very important. The windows do let in light, but with that visible light, they're also letting in a lot of heat. You're gonna have six times as much conductive heat going through a window as you would a wall. And you know, that's the opposite in the winter time because those windows feel super cold. A lot of times it's actually more uncomfortable for the occupants. I mean, if you look around us right now, all the blinds are down, right? So we designed for this idea that, oh, well, these great views and these great windows and all this, but if it's not done in a functional way, it just gets defeated. You know, you'll see people around you in office buildings with, um, you know, paper stuck on the windows because that every day the sun shines in there and they can't see their computer screen or it gives them headaches. And those are all visual comfort things that we try to provide feedback on, but that, you know, if you've got an all glass wall, there's nowhere to hide. The International Energy Conservation Code, in effect for Metro Nashville, technically limits the window-to-wall ratio at 30%. But builders push that envelope by proving added efficiencies in other areas. Technology right now for energy efficiency um, is, is fully mature. From the outside, it looks just like a vision glass, 
but you can see all the insulation that is on the inside of this glass. So this is what allows us to meet the energy model that um, all of our buildings need to meet. And then for us, we go a step further. We took incandescent lighting and went building to building to building, looking at the reflection of the glass at night. Because at night, our residents don't wanna see, like looking into a mirror, they wanna see the lights of the city. And we found a particular window that gave us all the energy efficiency, but at night you can still see out. And not all glass is created equal. Take a look at the JW Marriott and the Grand Hyatt. Two buildings that aren't that old, but apparently have some problem with glass. Well, there's, there's also a reason for that. Testing the limits of glass adds a big expense. Uh, the word is heat soaking. The glass manufacturers put the glass in a tank and run it to very cold, to very hot, back down to very cold. So there's been buildings, I don't want to mention names, but where there's been, you know, dozens of pieces of glass essentially explode that they did not heat soak the glass. I think glass is going to be here for a while, yeah. Until we get really serious about uh, performance-based energy goals, one of my colleagues is sort of famous for saying that even the dumbest of the three little pigs didn't build his house out of glass. The glassification of Nashville. That may be what the 2020s are remembered for. And there are several more glass structures on the drawing board, but this is interesting. Tony Gerontana says he'd also like to build a tower using more traditional materials, something as iconic as New York's Chrysler building. Ooh, Art Deco, I like that yeah, idea. That would be yeah. Great reporting as always, oh, Demetria, and we're so glad to welcome you to News Channel 5 and can't wait to hear more of those stories. It's gonna be a great partnership and it feels good to be back on TV. Yeah, and Not reviving the Nashville banner, it's really exciting, right? Long time coming, but we're, we're happy it's coming.